Hi there, friendo. Welcome back to my channel. Here we do fitness, workouts, health commentary. That sounds like a good time to you. A small disclaimer that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. This also is a trigger warning for those who have suffered from eating disorder tendencies. If that sounds like you, please feel free to click out of this video and take care of yourself. So I'll be very frank, I started this with a whole different intention of only looking at diet culture through Mikey, Glenn, and Gore's eyes, but then realized I should probably talk about all these other influencers, celebrities, and just the history of diet culture and where we see it today from TikTok to Instagram to here on YouTube. So I thought I'd do a mini brief history of diet culture. Join me as we do a small deep dive into the foray. Health and fitness pale in importance with the need to look a certain way. In fact, 78% of Americans are either overweight or obese, and that number is trending to increase despite the amount of money we pour into dieting. Americans spend over 61 billion a year on diet products, and the word diet is derived from the word dieta, which in Greek means way of living or lifestyle. In a poll of 2,000 participants, it was found that the average person will attempt at least two fad diets a year, typically abandoning it within as little as six days. People, it seems, seek a quick fix. Diets are offering that. Health and fitness implies work and time, whilst a diet implies minimal effort and the promise of instant gratification. Lose weight in two weeks, drop 10 pounds in a week. When in reality, those aren't healthy methods and ultimately the goal being weight loss is not achieved. But how on earth did we come to this? And how did we get this far from the derivative of way of living? Let's start first by reviewing the publications about diet culture and the diets purported at the time. The first ever diet book came out in 1558 and it was actually still in print, I found it. Luigi Corno, well I'm gonna butcher that, was an overweight Italian and had an epiphany at 40 years old. In his book, The Art of Living Long, he describes how he cut his food intake to 12 ounces a day and just 14 ounces of wine. Pretty sweet deal. The next publication is William Banting's, but we're gonna circle back to him. Well, I wanna talk about this fancy lady right here, Lulu Hunt Peters, who encouraged cutting calories in her 1918 book, Dieting and Health with the Key to Calories. It sold over 2 million copies. Peters suggested a diet of 1,200 calories a day to be eaten in 100 calorie units to find your ideal weight. Now, this contrasts heavily with William Banting, who published his letter of corpulence and coined the term I am banting in which he encourages 2,800 calories compared to the modern regimes of that 1,200 calories a day. He emphasized fats, roughage. He also encouraged at least five ounces of meat at breakfast and a small biscuit and so on. This takes us to the very first celebrity dieter and that is, you guessed it, Lord Byron, listed by people as the sexiest man alive. I'm kidding. He would starve himself and then binge. And today, he would be the proponent of the apple cider vinegar diet. Yes. This then takes us down all the way to the 1920s in which cigarette companies began selling ciggies as health aids that benefited digestion to help you stay slim. The biggest influencer, however, on slimness was the Hollywood movie industry and golf pros like Alice Bauer, as you see here. Silent film actors like Greta Garbo and Rudolf Valentino depicted the ideal body. To that end, the first celebrity trainer was Gaylord Hauser, who arrived in Hollywood with a fake doctorate degree claiming to know he knows what's what. He became a trainer for Greta Garbo and advised juicing to cleanse the body. His diet was extreme. Small piece of fruit for breakfast, salad for lunch, one piece of meat and chilled vegetables, and small piece of fruit for dinner. In the 1940s, World War II strikes and the government was rationing food and it was wrong not to finish all the food on your plate and you needed government issued. Frankly, if you ate more than your share, you were looked at as selfish and sinful. Following this, we had the 1950s when the rise of the hourglass figure came to be. You had Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor and popular Hollywood figures. Some weight loss products sold through ads in women's magazines were doctors diet reducing tabs and sauna slim suits and the vibe away trum tummy trimmer. Blech, that's a mouthful. Vibe away tummer trimmer. 
In the 1960s, the main approach to dieting was just counting calories and cutting out sweets and high fat foods. You had articles like how to look like your favorite model and this 17 diet guide. Then the 1970s struck and we saw the resurgence of the vibe away basically and that astronaut suit. In the 1980s, Princess Diana was the icon of choice, a woman who suffered from bulimia and the Hollywood Beverly Hills diet was introduced in 1981, which essentially encourages people to live off of fruit and make sure to be fit for life. In the 1990s, we were introduced to the food pyramid. Sugar busters grew in popularity, icons were extremely skinny, and supermodels like Linda Evangelista and Cindy Crawford, and very thin actresses like Michelle Pfeiffer and Meg Ryan grew in popularity. The Atkins diet was reintroduced, and Slim Fast, as you can see here, also made a resurgence. Do you see a pattern? Diet culture appears to be cyclical and things that were popular in the past have now come back and are popular again. It's very interesting to see. In the 2000s, we saw the rise of the cheater's diet, which encourages one cheat meal a week. And this is something that is still being encouraged. In fact, I found a recent, well, not so recent, but three years ago, Good Morning America was encouraging people to take cheat meals and it actually shows that you lose weight which is very interesting and that takes us to the present day so we've got your keto we have got your paleo we've got your intermittent fasting and then we've got your superfoods and your whole foods and your clean foods and every type of food that takes us to where we are now and where we see it today. So where do we see it today? And well, we see it everywhere. It's in our celebrities. When you click on the TV, we've got Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop. We've got The Rock and his cheat days. We've got the different types of you see influencers encouraging diets everywhere from Instagram to TikTok to Pinterest. And I had to share this clip from TikTok that I found just depicting all of the absolute ridiculous types of diet fads that you will come across and the ways that you are encouraged to eat and to treat your body. Everything from only eating meat to only eating a certain amount of food to counting your macros. How many times were you encouraged to do intuitive fasting or Weight Watchers or paleo or keto according to what you see and then where do you see it well we've already talked about instagram and tiktok but we also see it on youtube we see it in simple simple videos and seemingly innocuous videos like linda sons and we also see it with cassie ho's 90 day journey and the encouragement to lose weight even though she says that it wasn't only about that it's just everywhere so i took this and in February, I made a video about Olivia D'Andrea's weight loss journey. And I focused on one specific person, and that's this guy right here, Steve Zim. So I'm looking at a beauty guru's weight loss journey with Steve Zim at the center, and we're focusing on some diet culture fads that are perpetuated in it. Glam and Gore, otherwise known as Mikey. Her video, I lost 28 pounds of fat, in six inches off my waist. This video is actually from two years ago. It's from 2018. Whoa, holy crap. This video is from three years ago, yes. I thought, I'm gonna watch this video, see what I can find, and I was almost pleasantly surprised. Largely because Mikey takes a slightly different approach than Olivia did. So we're gonna go through some pros, and then we're gonna go through some cons, okay? And I'd really love to have Abby Sharp's professional opinion as a dietitian on this. And I'd also like to have Obese to Beast's opinion on this as well. And I also think that because this video has been out there for so long and has gotten so many views, I just wanna make sure that it's not causing any harm. she immediately has a disclaimer. She right away says that this is her experience. It's regarding how she lost weight. It's regarding eating. It's regarding nutrition. It's regarding weight loss. 
everything. She has a disclaimer right at the very beginning. She also mentions that she did not ever want to under eat on her weight loss journey. She knew that she had to eat a certain amount of calories in order to maintain, in order to lose weight as well. This was all about her feeling good and her feeling like herself again. She acknowledges that nobody can be committed 100% of the time. Any type of journey, it is going to be about consistency, but life is going to get in the way. You're going to have to move. Maybe a pandemic will start. There are things that you cannot control. I mean, Mikey mentions Coachella. I can't relate, but I can relate to things like you have to move. She also mentions that she just puts a pause to it, and that's great. I think that's a good, healthy mindset to have when you start on any type of journey in any way, shape, or form. It's all about understanding that there's a difference between a full stop and a pause. That brings me into the cons. Mikey acknowledges that she cannot be strict with her eating, but then goes on to the same types of foods day in and day out. She's okay with it, that works for her, I get it. The con in that is that she's eating beans, eggs, egg whites, spinach, and turkey those five things day in and day out. Every once in a while, she mentioned that if she wanted to have something different than that had clean ingredients in it, then she would have an RX bar. Clean ingredient food doesn't necessarily exist. Margaret McCartney from the British Medical Journal said that the command to eat cleanly implies that everyone else is filthy and being careless with their lives and with their bodies. It comes with a promise of energy boosts, glowing skin, spirituality, purity, and possibly immortality. But it's nonsense, really. It's all based on loose interpretation of the facts and a desire to make the pursuit of well-being an obsessive and full-time occupation. I know I'm saying this over and over again. I'd love to have Abby Sharp's opinion on that. She uses terms like intermittent fasting. She talks about sugar like it's crack cocaine as if it's, yes, it is addicting, sugar is addicting. Everything in, without moderation, everything in large amounts is going to be bad for you. I mentioned this in my video about Olivia D'Andrea, but it's kind of up in the air in terms of if sugar has a tendency to be like crack cocaine in that it has neuroblockers. And so far, the science proves it doesn't. Steve Zim realm. Here's, here's the problem that I have, like where Steve Zim is presented as the be all and end all in Olivia's video. In Mikey's, he's more of in the background, so to speak. He does get a pretty big pedestal, not gonna lie. She does promote his book. Perhaps it was a function of the editing skills that Mikey exhibits here, but in her video, we jump straight to the measurement and the use of a caliper, which should only be used by professionals and extremely experienced individuals, by the way. But we hop right into the body mass index and the body fat percentage, which is something that if you are training as a professional trainer, is one of the many things that you check. We have to check everything from your blood pressure to your heart rate to how much exercise you can withstand before we even think about body fat percentage. When we take Mikey's body fat percentage, sorry, when we take, like I'm just, ch -ch -ch. when we take Mikey's body fat percentage, we know that she is 34.6 body fat percentage. Now, in NASM's textbook, a recommended percentage is 35% to 20% for a, uh, a woman that's Mikey's age, according to NASM. Now, in Mikey's video, Steve Zim pulls up a book and she's, so she's at 34.6 and she's in the unacceptable range. So Steve Zim points that out and we kept that in, in the editing. I wanna know where Steve Zim's book, that book that he holds up, this one right here, where, where are the credentials for that? She was not unacceptable. A glass full of water with apple cider vinegar before you eat. There's no science to prove that having apple cider vinegar in your water increases metabolism. I'm not the biggest fan of Dr. Mike. I know, sue me, but 
He and I agree on this one topic. Look at how passionate he is about this. Apple cider vinegar is not the be all and end all. And it is absolutely some media companies that are perpetuating that myth. And that's something that Steve Zim encourages his clients to incorporate in their diets. And there really is no additional science to prove that it works. So this is also funny. Lord Byron basically is surfacing now here in 2021 and in 2018 and 2019. And it's absolutely hilarious to me. Steve Zim also encourages the use of BCAAs. The same character, Steve Zim, appears in both, but in two different lights. Uh, in Olivia's video, he is heralded as the person who's able to solve these issues, whereas in Mikey's video, he is a resource to help her reach her fitness goals, which is what a personal trainer should be. I would love to have obese to beast's thoughts on how Steve Zim approaches Mikey. There's a few things that he says in there that I'd love to have Obese to Beast's thoughts on. I think that that would be very, very interesting to hear from that perspective. And then again, as I'd mentioned, I would love to have Abby Sharp's opinion on the nutritional aspect of what Mikey did in order to meet her fitness goals. That concludes today's video. Except that doesn't conclude today's video. I'm sorry, but stick with me. After I reviewed all of Mikey's Glamming Gore, I found this, which was not hard to find. It just popped up on my recommendeds, but I found it so interesting and wait, oh look, who's that? Who's that? There he is. And guess what? He's saying the same thing. Every single video that I have found of Steve Zim, and there are many, it's the same falsehood. So I can't even imagine how many people have watched these videos with him selling these falsehoods. And here is another one. Here's uh, one from Buzzfeed. Steve Zim from A Tighter You is again selling the exact same falsehoods. So I decided to tack on a review of the BuzzFeed video and Gabby Hanna's video in conjunction with my Maybe case. this is something that went around and everybody did a reaction video to it already and gave out warning videos to them already. Maybe not, I'm not, I haven't seen them anywhere. I have done my research, I've looked for them. I cannot find them. Maybe they're in the Wayback Machine. Maybe I should look there. He's advising three creators on their diets and exercise regimens. And there are a few problematic things that he says in there. Skinny fat, you're getting away with being skinny, but there's no muscle mass to you. And it just means that you're not eating right, you're not working out right. I'm not disagreeing with not eating right. I'm not disagreeing with not working out right. I take issue with the term skinny fat because you're you're talking about someone's body here, and uh, <laughs> you should see the clip of when he says that. The girl that he's talking about is literally like this. Uh, he also mentions things like insulin spikes. That is how you're going to lose weight. You, sugar is bad. You should be staying away from all forms of sugar. There are cuts of these creators throwing away bread. Here Steve Zim says that if your insulin spike is high, you are not burning as much fat as you possibly could. The way you lose weight is with a caloric deficit, and the way that you gain weight is when you do a caloric surplus, and you do not need to take supplements. He recommends BCAAs to uh, minimize the amount of fatigue that your muscles have. Essentially, BCAAs are not essential. If you're getting all of the vitamins and minerals that you need in your diet, then adding in BCAAs won't help. Plus, they're his supplement, so of course he's going to sell it. He also mentioned something, and I need to do research on this as well, because what I'm seeing right now is not necessarily true, so I'm just gonna read some articles on it. Sorry, muscles, eating fat. Ah, so I did my research, and many professionals say that it's a myth that you can turn fat into muscle, or that muscle eats fat. During weight loss, fat is taken from fat cells and used to produce energy in the body along with other byproducts. Ideally, muscle is preserved through strength training and the consuming of protein-rich diet foods. In order for your body to utilize fat and burn it, the body has to convert triglycerides, the main form of fat stored in your body, into glucose. 
To be completely clear, no, muscle doesn't directly burn fat and nor does it eat it. Instead, the fat molecules have to be converted into glucose and then you can use it for energy. I would say with Gabby Hanna's video, it's less problematic largely because she spends most of the time saying the reason why she feels more positive is not necessarily because she lost weight, although that does add to it, not necessarily because her measurements are dropping, although that does add to it. It's because she spent time, she took time out of her day to spend on herself. Spend time on yourself. You deserve to spend time on yourself too. Life happens. But the trajectory of your fitness journey is predominantly straightforward but while you're going through it it's not going to feel like it's a linear journey these people gabby hannah mikey all those buzzfeed creators olivia d'andrea should go to a dietitian to ask about dietary feedback and advice. I can rant all day about Steve Zim, but the reason why I wanted to put this into it all into one video is that I didn't wanna do a series. Plus, every single time I made a video, I'd be saying the same thing because Steve says the same thing. So that's just boring. <laughs> I'd be so, wouldn't you be bored? I'd be bored. Okay. So where does this leave us? What can we do? Little by little, the detrimental advice piles up and over a period of time, many believe that this advice is hard truth and that is simply not the case. Anytime you read, see, or hear something surrounding healthcare and whether it applies to you, take those as pieces to add to a puzzle rather than the thing to absolutely do. The same rule of thumb should be said for these diets. Take it as the asterisk at the bottom rather than the paragraph in your textbook of living. You like my metaphor? Remember that these diets are quick fixes and usually full of unnecessary frills. If you find a plan that promises results, you do your research, look at the science, talk to a dietitian and test it out, then I'd say go for it. Ultimately, look out for yourself. I'm just here presenting the information. Whether or not you choose to run with it or use it at all in any way is up to you. I want you to take care of yourself. That concludes today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed this. On your way out the door, please don't forget to leave a like. Please don't forget to subscribe. And please don't forget to hit that notification bell. Boom! So that you never miss another video between the plants. And I. All right, everybody. Have a cool day.